are you doing to set yourself up for your worst day? Yeah. The days when you're tired. The days when you're horny. Mm. Let's be honest. Hello, when you're tested. Yeah. The days when you're not your most spiritual. When you forgot to read your Bible. Yeah. Anymore. The days you're pissed and stressed. And what things. systems, what boundaries, what things do you have in your life that can protect you on those days? Because honestly, it's ignorant to think you live in the rainforest and it's never going to rain. What's up, fam? Welcome back to the We Are Just Dating page. My name is Tim. This is my beautiful wife, Pauline. And you are tuning in to another episode of the W Podcast, where you get wisdom in the word with the... Wheeler. Hey, so we are so glad that you joined us this week. We're talking about something that it may upset some of y'all. I'm just going to be honest. Ooh. It may upset some of y'all. We're talking about one of the biggest mistakes Christians make in dating. Yeah, we're going there because... A few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, we had a video that was talking, it wasn't even about vacations, but we had a clip in the video that talked about vacations and what we don't understand about how Christians can do it and how for us, like, I can't imagine being in the same room with this woman on a vacation. I seen her half naked all day. Like, that was a video and it kind of blew up a little bit. It got a lot of traction on social media. But particularly on TikTok, uh, if you don't follow us on TikTok, make sure you go and follow us right now at We Are Just Dating. But on TikTok, it blew up probably more so to Instagram. And there was a comment on there where someone actually said, well, good for y'all that y'all not going on vacations, but some of us can resist. And that just was so interesting to me. Now, if you're the person who wrote that, no shade, it's all love. But it was just an interesting perspective for me to sit back and be like, Hmm. Like, you're not the only person who thinks like that. Right. There's course. people who think that because you can resist something or because you can do something and it's not simple, that you should still do it in dating. And I, that's kind of what we want to talk about. Like, what is the difference between wise actions and simple actions in dating? How do you know the difference? How do you conflict the two? So we're going to get all into that. But first, can you subscribe to the channel? If this video adds value to you, if any video you ever watch has been something that's helped you, we would love for you to subscribe and officially join the fam. Yes. So can you read what the question or what the topic is that we're discussing today? Yes, and we didn't match on purpose if you're wondering that. But it just worked out that way, I guess. But. Okay, the question is, what is the difference between wise activities and sinful activities in godly dating? Yeah, and the premise of this whole video, we want to base off this verse in 1 Corinthians 10, 23. And it says, you say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. Other translations say not everything is beneficial for you. And that's really what our whole mindset is, because a lot of times there's things that we could do yeah and even in marriage there's things we could do yeah. there's stuff we could watch but is that best for us and we'll, we'll unpack that so simple activities let's just get that out the way those are obvious sex before marriage lusting over each other things like that that that's simple that's not really what i want to talk about in this video mm -hmm. i really want to focus more on that wisdom aspect and like what are things that you're maybe doing that is not simple it's not in the Ten Commandments, but it's not best for you to th have a thriving relationship and honor God. Right. And again, if you're trying to have a godly dating relationship, that should be the main goal, to be honest, like to honor God through your dating. Yeah. <clears throat> it's so interesting because like, I know for me, it always catches me up with like eating and diets hmm. because like I love cookies and I would love to eat cookies all day, every day, right? But that doesn't help me. It doesn't help me reach my fitness goals, my weight goals. Like, it just it's, it doesn't benefit me. But am I allowed to do it? Is it sinful? No. Is it illegal? No. But it's not benefiting me. And it doesn't help me get to where I want to go. I think that that verse puts everything in perspective that we're going to go into because could you, you know, go on vacation with your boyfriend or girlfriend and stay in the same room? You could. No one's going to come arrest you for that. God's not going to strike you down or even punish you because our God is not a punishing God. And all of our sin is taken care of on the cross by Jesus. And we're so thankful for that, right? But does it help you get to where you want to go? Does that help you build 
a lifestyle of self-control, which is a fruit of the spirit. Does it help you with discipline? Does it help you honor your future spouse? So you have to kind of think about it in that perspective. Like, is it helpful for me or am I just doing it because I want to do it and I'm not going to get in trouble? I'm abusing grace. Yeah. So hear us, please. We are not perfect Christians. We are not perfect people. We are not condemning. If, if you're somebody that you may struggle with some things that we touch on, that's okay. Like, this is a place where you can learn, you can hear, get perspective, and then go to God and ask the Lord. Like, yeah. what do you what do you think about this? What should I be doing? Because ultimately, that's what we should be doing as Christians anyway, is seeking the Lord's will, not our will. Mm -hmm. So, again, please, there's no condemnation. But I do want to make sure we're all on the same page. So let's talk about wise activities or what does that even mean? Because wise activities are choices you make to deny your flesh, even if what you were doing was not sinful. And, and that is really the basis of what we're talking about here. So an example is this. Yes, you are a grown man. Yes, you are a grown woman. And you can be in the house alone with your partner. You don't need somebody to hold your hand, but is that wise? Yeah. And hear us. We're not, this video is not about us telling you what you should and should not do. This video is more so hopefully opening your eyes to do your own evaluation and have a real conversation with the Lord. Hey, what do you think about this? How, the way I'm operating and dating, is that cool with you? That's really what we want from this. So yeah, you're grown. You can have somebody in your house, but is that wise? Because Here's what we miss. When you are trying to decide wise activities from sinful activities, you want to make sure that when you, you're setting yourself up for your worst day. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to decide what are wise activities, what are you doing to set yourself up for your worst day? Yeah. The days when you're tired. The days when you're horny. Mm. Let's be honest. Whoa, when you're tested. Yeah. The days when you're not your most spiritual, when you forgot to read your Bible. Yeah. Anymore. There's your pissed and stressed. And what things. systems, what boundaries, what things do you have in your life that can protect you on those days? Because honestly, it's ignorant to think you live in the rainforest and it's never going to rain. Right. Like, you're going to need to have situations, uh, boundaries, things that protect you from when you're slipping. Because we're all going to slip. We're all going to have days where yeah. we're not our best. So we want to make sure we have guardrails up yeah. that protect us from going further than we want to go yeah it's very similar to insurance like we if you own a motor vehicle you have to have insurance right and you may never use it i mean there's a good chance at some point in your life you are going to get in a car accident someone's going to hit you you're going to hit somebody just because it's so common in, in the car so much but you pay your insurance every single month because you don't know when that day is going to come right but you're prepared for when it does and it's actually illegal for you do try to buy insurance and use insurance after you've gotten in an accident, right? So the same way that we set up our boundaries, our physical boundaries for our worst day, you want to take that same mindset and approach of, I'm doing this just in case. Because I'm a sinful person. We live in a, a sinful, fallen world. I'm dating another person who is sinful and who is subject to temptation. Um, so you want to make your decisions with that mindset in the same way that you're like, I'm a good driver, but there's a lot of bad drivers around me. So not only do I have this insurance for myself in case I make a mistake, but also to protect me from when I get hit by another person. Yeah. And we're not telling you anything that we didn't live out yeah. for ourselves or that we haven't seen other couples work out for themselves. And that's, many of you know the story, but that's why we decided to stop kissing when we were dating. Because when we first started dating, the first six months we were kissing. And even though that's not a sin, uh, but even though we could argue that as a whole separate video, even though that's not a sin per se, for us, it wasn't best for us to continue yeah, okay. because we were not, we would not have made it in purity to the wedding day. We probably would have at some point ended up having premarital sex because we were like the flesh is we'll always to going to want more. And it always starts with something small, right? Like, oh, well, let's just kiss. Oh, well, oh let's just be alone in the house. Oh, let's just touch and rub and... Right. You know, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, six months later, we ended up having sex. And for us, a kiss wasn't just a little peck. You know, right. we're, we're, that's a separate thing. But for us, kissing was kissing, like kissing for real. Open yeah. mouth, kissing. We out here. That. Yeah. So that, 
you're not going to make it. If you keep doing that consistently, it's just, it's setting yourself up for failure. So that's what I would say. What What do you have to say? Yeah. So I took a more practical approach to this Love question Let's because that's practical. how my mind works. Um, but of course you want to remember the, the purpose of godly dating, right? You're not just here to have a good time um, or, you know, what's the saying? Like, I'm not just here for, I'm not here for a long time for a good time. That's not, that's not the approach, the mindset we're taking. We're here. You don't want either of those in dating. You right. You don't, don't want a long time. You don't want it to just be a Ooh. good time. Honestly, pursuing holiness, I really believe fun is a byproduct of that because fun is associated with joy, right? And joy is a fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit only comes from God and pursuing him and his holiness. So you don't have to worry. I think our minds can be renewed sometimes about what fun means because we think fun is like a secular. We learned fun to be something secular, you know, before we knew the Lord. Some and people can't have fun without getting drunk. Right. Like, which is, is that really fun? Like, I don't know. That sounds dangerous to me. It's not being controlled of your body. But anyway, um, so yeah, we have to remember what, what it means to be somebody who wants to participate in godly dating is you're not just here to have a partner to go to on dates with and go on vacations with and go just even on fun activities. Like that's not the whole purpose. You're there to, to figure out is this person who God has for me for marriage? Is this would this be a good godly spouse for me personally? Would I be a good spouse for them? So honestly, every interaction, every conversation, big, small, every date you have is gonna help you answer that question further and further and further. And I know I'm oversimplifying it. It's much more complicated than just that. But honestly, that's why you're here, right? Um, and so you can think of it as like a one year long job interview. That's what godly dating really is. Um, again, give or taking the time. Don't get caught up in the time. But that's the purpose of why you're here is to figure that out. If you think about your job interview, every email you send, every phone call you have, every in-person or virtual interview um, that you have with that interaction that you have with that company and the people who work with that company matter. And that should also be the same for dating. So if you're dating somebody and they tell you that they're a Christian and they love God and, you know, they want to um, have a relationship that's centered around God, but then, you know, you kind of get a couple months and then they're like, oh, we don't have to actually, you know, not kiss or Oh, I was, I, now that we've been together for a while, you know, I think it's okay for us to be alone or we can stop going to church or I don't actually read my Bible, you know, as much as like, hold on a second. You, you ain't won nothing yet. You ain't won nothing yet. You understand? You're not in, it's not a commitment until the wedding day. So don't get comfortable just because I said, yeah, I'll be your girlfriend now, kind of go on this path with you. And now you're going to start getting comfortable what the heck is gonna happen when we say i do you're really gonna let up then and i'm not interested in that that's when the work starts is at the aisle so just want to give that perspective of that's what it means to godly date right and that's why all these activities matter so when it comes to um, activities you can do when you're uh, in a godly dating relationship. Um, it's really all about seeing that person in different environments, right? You want to see them with their family, with their friends. You want to see them in public. What are they like at work? What are they like at church? You know, and they should be doing the same thing about you. Yeah, I want to show you, you know, how good I am at my job. Yeah, I want to show you uh, how much I love my family and what a good friend I am. That should be you should just the same way again with your job interview. Here's my proof. Here's how I, the projects I've worked on in the past. These are the companies that I've added value to. This company wouldn't be who they are if I didn't work on this project for them. You should do the same. I want you to meet my little sister. I want you to see how I drive her all around and she's, you know, this great dancer because of what I've taught her. Whatever the case is, you should be showing off your best to people, but also showing them your growth. Hey, five years ago, uh, this is where I was, and, and this is how what the Lord has done, you know, in me and through me. Um, so that's what it's really all about. You want to see them in different environments. So there's, you want to have fun. Of course, you should be, you know, whatever your idea of fun is, do that. If you enjoy going to sporting events, take them there. If you enjoy, um, you know, reading, like show them, you know, different places that you like to read or books you like to read. I don't know. Whatever it is that is fun for you. Get somebody in that environment, you know, like roller skating, you know, take somebody roller skating. Um, and if they fall on their butt and they know how to laugh at themselves, that's a really good sign, right? Because you want to be with somebody who can laugh when, when, when things happen, hard things happen in life. Um, so those, that's what you want to focus on with the activities. There's more actually that you can do than you can't do. Really anything in public 
anything during the day is going to pretty much cover you as far as making sure you're wise and you're not going to get in yourself in any trouble. Um, we have a great list of different activities you can do through the season that's for free on our website or in our link. Um, it's called the date night guide. So in different seasons of the year, we have suggestions on like how you dates you can go on if you need a place to start. So there's a plug there. Um, but you want to make sure you're talking a lot. Yeah. I personally don't like the movies as a dating like environment not because of like oh people do weird stuff in the movies obviously that does happen but it's more just like you can't talk in the movies I mean if you do go to the movies there's a movie you both really want to see like that's fine just go to dinner after so you can talk about it yeah, anything that's during the day and at in the public you'll be pretty much safe so that's why we say stay out of the house stay out of the car with each other be in front of others <laughs> as much as you possibly can. I'm not saying only do group dates, but I'm saying being in public um, will help you. And then as far as what you cannot do, Tim did a pretty good job of like the sinful activities and like how, but also it's gonna vary per person because everyone has different temptations. And this is where the self-awareness comes in is you really need to know you. Sit down and make a list and kind of like evaluate your life and like when have what situations have led me to, to be into sin, sexual sin specifically. You know, when have I been vulnerable? Is it when I'm alone? Is it when I'm going through like a depressive state? Is it when I haven't spent time with God? Is it when I'm in a bad place with my friends? I tend to turn to the opposite sex. I'm not sure. Everybody has their patterns, um, and, but you need to know what yours are. You need to be aware of the schemes that the enemy uses against you. The Bible talks about that. A lot of times you just walk around oblivious. Oh, I don't know how I got here. Well, have you taken the time to like sit and evaluate the past couple of years of your life and see how you got to, you know, what has what patterns and cycles have led you there? Um, so anything that tempts you personally, you need to stay aware of and we're, or stay away of. And we're actually really big proponents of you writing out your own boundary list, your personal boundary list, and sharing that with your partner and saying, hey, this is what I need from you. If we're going to be in a relationship, I need you to leave this, this, and this alone, and I need you to do this, this, and this. Can you do that? Can you agree to this list? I need you to respect this. If you can't, then you're not going to be able to move forward in a relationship. Um, and if you can that's great. And then they say, I would love to do this, but I do need help on how. Um, I don't know how to do this, but I want to. I want to learn. And that's what you're looking for is the willing heart, not necessarily like the experience or the knowledge. Um, but yeah, you need to know yourself. I mean, Netflix and chill, I don't know that that's ever helped anybody who's trying to date godly and you're not married. Um, Netflix and chilling with somebody who is of the opposite sex, that's not your family, and that, you know, that you're attracted to is just really not going to help you out. And again, we're not trying to be tyrants or, like, police or anything like that. We're really trying to help you be who you say you want to be, right? You say you want to be in a godly dating relationship. Godly dating means that God is at the center. God is holy. And this is the holiness that the Lord tells us to pursue and to, to us to be like. And holy means to set yourself apart. Yeah. Just for clarity. Yeah, and then um, the last piece about, like, you know, what you cannot do is waste your time. So what does that mean? That means, again, back to the job interview. If you are, you know, looking to get hired by a company and, you know, you, you – or you are want to know if, if this is the place where you want to work, you're going to do your research. And I'm just going to talk to companies just because, because if they're not the right company, you're going to quickly figure that out and move on and try to find the one that is, right? So the same thing happens for dating. You don't want to waste your time. The second you find out that somebody is not who they say they are, thank you so much for, for revealing that to me. I hope you have a great life, and I'm going to make myself available for the next person, right? Don't waste your time. Don't, you know, fall subject to the scarcity mindset. You know, God his, God said in his word that Jesus came so that we can have life and have life in the abundance. So the Lord has somebody for you and you don't want to waste your time with somebody because of loneliness or because you're afraid that there's nobody else out there. So please don't waste your time. Don't do activities that you know are going to end up you know, being something you regret. And then don't waste your time with somebody who you know is not for you. So... Yeah. Yeah. So I want to read the verse one more time because honestly, that is the essence of this video. And this is the next step we want you to take. The verse says, you say I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. One simple action step after this video, sit down, spend some time with God, ask him, Lord, what is something 
that isn't good for me. Mm. Show me something that isn't good for me that a mindset I have towards dating, because you may not even be dating yet. So is it a mindset I have? Is it something that I'm planning to do? Lord, show me what isn't good for me. Doesn't mean that other people can't do it. Doesn't mean if other people do it, they're simple. But what isn't good for me? Lord, you know me. Your word says that you formed me in my mother's womb before I was born. So you know me better than anybody. Lord, show me what isn't good for me. And I think if you do that, you'll set yourself up to have a strong relationship. Thank you for watching this week's episode of the W Podcast. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. To get more Christian relationship advice, subscribe to our channel. And make sure you check out our other videos as well.